Hello everyone, JJIR here. In this video, we're going to talk about a specific application for iOS, which is called Blink Shell, Mosh, and SSH Client, which will allow us to connect to remote servers so that we can program as if we were on them locally. As you know, we cannot install Linux on the iPad directly, so using a remote server is our best bet for programming, full-fledged programming. And in this case, the Blink Shell allows us to do that with great efficiency. So I'm going to go through the options that Blink Shell offers, and then we're going to connect that to a Compute instance in Google Cloud Platform to see how we can program remotely on that server. So the first thing we want to do is open this guy up. It's going to unlock. You can put a lock option on here so that after 10 minutes, it automatically locks up for security's sake, which I also like. When you get into the app the first time, you need to touch the app, whether it be with your trackpad or your finger, because otherwise it doesn't do anything. So I'm typing actually right now, nothing's happening. Once I actually click on the app, then it will start typing again. So to make this bigger, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Command, Shift, and the Plus. That will make this bigger so we can actually see the text for the video. And speaking of the Command button, we're going to press that and hold it so we can see what are the keyboard shortcuts that we have here. So we have quite a few. We have copy paste, new window, close window, focus on our window, new tab, close tab, next tab. And then we have some other options for the tabs. And then down here we have zoom in, zoom out, like we just did now, zoom reset, and then show config, which is this guy here. And we'll need that right now because when you open up Blink the first time, you don't see anything. So the idea here is that we need to go into the config. And there's no two ways of doing this. We can either do it with command comma, or we can actually type C-O-N-F-I-G, and that will bring us to the same thing. So if I type C-O-N-F-I-G and enter, then the settings will come up. But if we close that and we just click on command comma, then this will come up as well. So here we have uh, various options that we can play around with. We have our keys. These are the SSH keys, public and private, and we will use these now. Then we have our hosts, which is what was allows us to jump into the remote server, which we will also configure. The default user, which I usually just leave as the username of most of my accounts. You can do the same for you. And then we have appearance, keyboard, smart keys, and then down below we have iCloud Sync and Auto Lock, X callback URL, then feedback and support. So the auto lock, you actually just saw it when I opened up the link. This allows us to lock this ev after 10 minutes of non-use so that you don't have people jumping into your Blink shell and playing around with what you have there in the code. You have iCloud Sync, so the configurations that you have here will actually be transferred. If you use this on your iPhone, which you can do, they will transfer the configurations you have there so you can have them there as well. Here above, we have what's called the keyboard and the smart keys. So if we go here to keyboard, we have the possibility of having shortcuts. And these are the shortcuts we actually saw when we clicked on command. So these are the very same ones we can also find here. Without having to look for them, we can go and refresh that here as well. If you go out of that, we have the possibility of custom keyboards. And then down here, we have ways of configuring the caps lock, the shift, the control, and everything else. Now, before you all start jumping to looking to configure something for the escape key that we all know is not on the magic keyboard or on the folio, there is actually an escape key combination, which is command period. I don't know why Apple doesn't have this anywhere, but the fact is you don't have to configure that if you don't want to, or otherwise you can use the language key, which is a little globe, and you can do it that way as well. But my suggestion is get used to the natural or the integrated combination, which is command period, which will also give you an escape key already integrated into the keyboard shortcuts that Apple offers. Down here we have custom presses. If I'm using a keyboard that's not an English keyboard, typically I have a problem with that. So what I do is I can reconfigure that to do certain things. And you can do that for any type of keyboard shortcuts that you want here. So that's a very nice thing about Blink is that you can reconfigure basically almost any combination to do what you want with inside Blink. So after that, we can get out of this. And then we have uh, the um, appearance here. And with appearance, we have the possibility of changing the colors. 
and the fonts. So up here we have themes, and then down below we have fonts. And I usually just go with Revolto here, and the default. But you can actually add new themes. We'll see that in a second. Down below we have font size, and those uh, we I usually just leave it 16. External display. That's one of the major advantages here. And actually, if we go down, you're going to see that we have layouts, and we also have external display. This is one of the very few applications within the iOS system that actually has an independent way of showing everything on a screen. So it doesn't have these big black bars that typically you have on an application. This one actually fill up the entire screen. So you can set that up here with the external display and actually have a different size font for the external display. And all these things are pretty awesome to have. So you have your enable bold, bold is bright, cursor blink if you want. And you have a style if you want it light or dark, the key cast and all that type of stuff is also here. So if you wanted to add a new theme, you can actually do that fairly easily. It goes here and then it will say JS theme file and you can add a URL and it will add that theme. So there's a whole bunch of these things already set that you can add here to modify this. So for example, if I want to go back here to Safari and we go to this page, which I will leave in the description under the video, you have the possibility of going here and clicking on themes. And then when you go into here, you have all these themes that you can add. So basically, you just click on one like this. And then you have to grab the link up here, Command C. And then you would go back to Blink and add that in here, Command V. And then add a title, which could be Day, for example. And then Import. And then you have that theme. And you save. And then we'll add that here. So I'm not going to apply it, but you can move yourself around with the ones that you integrate within Blink and change the colors as you so wish along with everything else that's here. You can also add new fonts. So as you can see, this is pretty high class configuration, so to speak, for what you can do with a terminal. Uh, but it's actually very, very good, and I think you will enjoy it once you start playing around with the configurations for the appearance. So after we have that, we go up here, like I mentioned, these two things we're going to see right now. But otherwise, there's not much more to be said about this. So if we want to get out, we just click on X here. And like I mentioned before, if you start typing something, it will actually give you some suggestions uh, for what you want to do. So for example, I have config here, and then I have other things that you can add. Or if I want to mosh into something, all I have to do is mosh, and then it will tell you that you have some options after you click on the space bar. So given the fact you can have many of these things, if you press on tab, you can actually move around to the different uh, SSH things that you have ready to go, and that will bring you there. Not only that, let's presuppose that I jumped into one of these. So we'll go back one here just to click on the J me one. Go into that guy. Once you click on and you choose one of these things, it'll tell you, okay, you got to do something here because you have MOS servers disconnected. So we'll just kill those by a K-I-L-L and then typing out the number here. I don't need this here open, so we'll just happily kill it. And then we'll do clear. So I'm actually inside of one of my remote servers on Google Cloud Platform, which we will see the process right now. But you can also open up many of these at the same time, which I also think is pretty awesome. So if I do con Command T, that will actually open up another one, a separate shell here. And I can make this bigger again. And then I can mosh into another one that I have. So I can open up this guy. And these are actually two compu Compute Engine VM instances on Google Cloud Platform in different accounts. And I can open them up at the same time here and go back and forth by clicking on Command, Shift, and then the arrows. So I can go from here to here. So I can have one of these doing one thing and then another one doing another thing. And the nice thing about it is, given the fact that the Google Cloud Platform will give you a free tier, you could open up a whole bunch of Gmail accounts and have 5, 10, 15, 20 of these things open at the same time and working on different projects. As long as they're not CPU intensive and as long as you're not trying to have massive databases working at the same time, if they're projects you're working on, if they're small little things, if they're bots or whatnot, then yeah, you can do a ton of stuff here without having to really leave this infrastructure of the Blink SSH um, terminal here. So it, now that we've seen that, we're going to jump out of these. So I'm just going to go exit out of this guy and then exit out of this guy. And we'll do the same here with the exit. And now I'm done here. So. To actually jump out of Blink or actually close Blink, it's one of the few applications that you can actually do by command. So I've already e exited out of everything. There's nothing else here. 
and so Blink is by itself. But if I wanted to completely close Blink, all I have to do is Command Shift W, and that actually closes Blink completely and brings me back here. So it's got a lot of cool options that allows you to, with your keyboard, control basically everything that's inside of Blink. So we'll open this guy back up again. It's going to unlock automatically because I closed it, which is really nice. So the security there is pretty cool. We're going to bring this, make this bigger again. Remember, you have to touch the screen or tap on it to make sure that you can actually interact with it. We'll make him a little bigger here for the video. And now what we want to do is we want to set up the Google Cloud Platform so we can uh, connect ourselves, just as you saw right now with the examples I was giving. So we're going to go back into Safari here. And we'll go into our page that has the Google Cloud Platform here. So unfortunately, because we don't have Linux from zero on the iPad, we do have to configure some things here graphically. And then we can do the rest with G Cloud, which is also pretty awesome. So if I want to go in here, then what I'll do is I'll create a project. And after we click on Create Project, we're going to set the project up so we can begin working. We'll just use this as Blink Test. We're going to delete this project afterwards, so I don't really care too much about it. And then we'll leave that as it is. And then we're just going to click on Create and let that start getting itself set up. OK, so that was actually set up pretty quickly. Not much of a problem there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the three bars, the three horizontal bars on the upper left. And then we're going to go down to the Compute Engine here. And then we're going to click on VM Instances. This might take a few minutes to set up. The first time you open it up, that's not a problem. That's normal. Just wait for it, and then we'll continue on with the process. OK, so that took a couple minutes to finish off. Not a problem. Now that this thing is ready to go, we will click on Create here so we can set this guy up. Here above, we're just going to put whatever title we want. Just make sure it has at least six characters. So again, we're just going to put Test Blink. And then down below, oh yes, and it has to be lowercase, as they mentioned here. In fact, let's see here. Let's make this guy a little bit bigger if we can. And down here, we have US Central. We'll just leave it like that. This one, we're going to make as an F, because usually it's something newer. And then down below, we're going to change this. We don't want to spend any money, so we're going to go with the F1 Micro, as you can see here. And that will allow us to make sure that we don't spend any money on this Compute Engine. Down below, I'm going to change this. You can leave it as this if you want, but I like using Ubuntu, so I'm going to change this to Ubuntu and to the newest version that for right now is actually on the 20.04. Afterwards, we're going to change this to 30 gigabytes, which is the maximum size we get for the free tier. Afterwards, we're going to click on Select. Down below, we're going to allow full access to all cloud APIs. And then down below, we're going to activate allow HTTP and allow HTTPS traffic. And then we're going to click on create here. Now we're going to let that spin up and we'll get back to it once it's finished. OK, so that only took a few seconds. And then after that's done, then all we have to do is click on test blink here. And then we're going to go to edit. And then down here, we're going to go to where it says SSH keys. And here we have, you have zero SSH keys. We're going to show and edit. And here is where we're going to put our public key from our Blink shell. So now we're going to go back to our Blink shell. And here, like we said, we can click on Command comma to jump into settings. And then down below, we're going to go here to keys. And then we're going to click on keys here. Now, you can add new keys, and that's not a problem. But just keep in mind the following. Blink does not like it when you delete this. So this ID underscore RSA1, which is the original private public key you have, the idea here is that even if you don't use this, you need to make sure that you don't delete it. So for example, I can click on this guy and then copy public key. I don't need the private key at this moment in time. And then I can go back to where we were before. And I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm going to get rid of this last part here about the iPad, which means nothing to me. And then we're going to leave it as JJ, which is basically the user, the administrative user of this account. So after that is done, then all we have to do is go down here and click on Save. And that's going to update itself now. And now that we have that ready, we can actually go back to where we were with the blink. And then 
once that's done, we're going to go back to settings and go to hosts. And we have to set this guy up now. So we're going to click the plus sign here. And here, this name here can be anything you want. So again, we're just going to put blink test. Down here, we're going to leave you JJ because that's the administrator of the account over in Google Cloud Platform. And then down here with keys, we're going to click on the ID underscore RSA one. We need to make sure that's active. We'll go back here. And then finally, we need to add the public IP address of the Compute Engine. So we're going to go back here. And then we're going to go out here with the arrow. And we're going to select this guy here so we can have that and put him over there. We actually, we have a copy clipboard here. That made it easier. So we'll just click on that. We'll go back to blink here. And now we will try Control Command V in this case. And once that's done, now everything is finished. You don't have to touch anything else here. Everything else is perfectly fine. And we're going to save that. And now that's done, we can actually go out of this and X. And now we're here. Now, very important point here is that Mosh is not installed automatically on the Compute Engines in Google Cloud Platform. Therefore, at the beginning, before you can start playing around with the Compute Engine, you need to make sure that you only SSH into that when you start off. Then later on, you can install Mosh, and then this will be much, much better. But at the beginning, unfortunately, we have to do SSH, and then we use the blink test. So yeah, we'll use that tab, and then we'll enter into this. It will ask me if I should trust, and I'm going to type yes, and I will type yes again, and that should, in theory, bring us. And now we are actually officially inside that wonderful little remote server that we have from Ubuntu, so we can clear this up, and now we are officially inside. So essentially, that's all you have to do in relationship to this process to get yourself connected to a remote server on Google Cloud Platform. Very, very simple. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple extra steps to this so that we can do a few other things later on, especially in relationship to programming here. So we're going to use CLASP in future videos, which will allow us to use Google Apps Script remotely on this type of terminal. So we're going to do that. And along with any other things that we want to use with REST APIs, we're going to program them here on our little Google Cloud Platform Compute Engine remote Linux server. So the idea here is to configure a few more things within the Google Cloud Platform project so that this becomes even more usable later on. So we're going to go back here. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to open up a Medium article I have about this so we can actually use gcloud within Blink while we're programming and setting these things up. So I'm going to click on the plus sign here and we're going to open up that article right now. Okay, so now we have our article opened up here that I have in relationship to Google Cloud Platform. We don't have to do everything right now, but we do have to at least install and update the essentials so we can jump in by Mosh instead of SSH. So we're going to grab at least some of this text right here. And I'm just going to go down all the way to Vim because the rest of this we can actually install later on just so we are able to update everything and then add Mosh and Vim, which are the essential things that we want to use later on for programming. So I'm going to Command C that, and then we're going to go back into Blink here, and then I'm going to Command V. So as you can see, Command C and Command V work perfectly here. You don't have any problems with that. And then Besides that, just so you know, Blink does allow you to select text here. So I can select things and copy and paste very, very easily. That's not a problem either. We'll also be able to see how you can scroll later on, but at least all the essentials that you need for a shell like this is added. So let's click on Enter here so we can get that run running and up and going. Okay, so that only took a couple minutes. That was actually really, really nice. And I'm going to take advantage to show you guys that you can actually scroll here. I'm using the Magic Trackpad, and you can scroll up and down in the text here in Blink. So that's another fantastic option that Blink offers. So now that's done, we can actually clear that up. And now what we want to do is we want to take advantage of gcloud to configure the rest of the project that we have online so we can better program in the future with the Google Cloud Platform. So unlike a normal local Linux server or whatever that you have, this one already has gcloud integrated. So if I jump in here and type gcloud version, what will actually tell me is that I already have gcloud installed. So I don't have to worry about that in that case. 
So the only thing I have to do now is start setting this up so I can configure our projects. So here we'll just click on gcloud init and then it's going to ask me what I want to do with this. We don't have any type of specific thing we want to do. So what we want to do is actually add uh, our administrative account here so we can start playing around with this. So what we're going to do now is actually say we want to log in with a new account, which will be number two. And then it says, do you want to continue? And we will say yes. And what that will do is give us a nice big link that we're going to pop into Safari. So we're going to select this. Given the fact link allows us to do that, we're going to copy that. And we're going to hop back into Safari, open up a new tab, with command T and then command V to paste that in enter okay I'm actually gonna leave this like this for one second just so you guys can see for some reason there are problems and it actually puts spaces inside the link so if we go back here even though this appears to be ready to go unfortunately there are spaces inside this so what we're gonna have to do is actually reformat the link to make sure that there's no spaces inside of a link and then what we're going to do is paste it here into Safari. I've had this happen a couple times already. Not a problem. What we'll do right now is reformat it and then paste it back inside. Okay, so we fixed the link. And essentially what happens here is that you need to make sure that there's no secret enters that are being put in here. So if we go back to Blink here, it gets cut off. As you can see here, it res and then fonts here. So you'd probably, the suggestion here is probably just to make the text as small as possible so that there's as little as possible of this going on from one line to another. And then whatever is goes from one to another line, you'll just have to connect it because there's like some sort of hidden return things here that get stuck in there. So uh, it took me a few minutes to just do this now, but like I said, as long as you make the text super small, you probably won't have to do as many of those. But it is suggested that you pop the link inside some sort of element like the notes app here fix that to make sure that everything is actually connected and there's no secret returns. This isn't actually returns, it's actually connected here, but if there was one here like I found before, then you have to get rid of them by just clicking on the text here at the beginning and then clicking backspace to get rid of anything that's in these empty spaces that you would have. Again, this is already formatted, but you'd have to do this before you pop that into Safari to make sure that that would work out correctly. So now that we're here, we can actually type in the email and the password of the account we want to use so we can control the Google Cloud Platform with that account. So after we sign in, it's going to ask us to give permissions to G Cloud to start working on our account, and we're going to click on Permit here. And then afterwards, it's going to give us this link, and this link we're just going to copy, and then we'll paste it back into Blink here so we can start working on this account. As you can see, we have our Blink test here, and that is the project we want to start using. So we're going to click on one here to use Blink test. And now it's asking me to configure a default compute region. No, no, we don't need that right now. We're just gonna click on no, and then that should allow us to keep on running. So now that we have that set up, we can actually clear this. And now we can actually configure our project with some configurations with gcloud. So we'll go back here to our article to grab those commands. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that all our APIs are ready to go. So we'll do those first. So we'll actually grab this here from the article and get all of our APIs installed within the project. So we'll do command C here, go back to blink and command V and then enter. And we'll let it do its thing. Okay, now that that's done, we'll go back to the article and then we'll get another thing that we need to do here. So the next thing we want to do is set up our firewalls. We're going to need this for our bots and especially for our MOSH. So we're actually going to grab this here. We're going to do Command C and then we're going to go over here to Blink and then we're going to paste that in. Now, normally it doesn't like you to use uppercase here. So we're actually going to change these firewall name three, two, one things, and we're going to change those to something more adequate. Okay, so now that we've changed the names, and uh, we're going to use bot1, bot2, and mosh, so we can jump into mosh. We're going to click on enter on this to get those firewall rules up and going. Okay, that didn't take a long time, so we actually we can clear this up here. And now what we can actually do is exit this, clear that, and we can jump back in, but now we can jump in with mosh. So we can wash, blink test, enter, and now we're set to go. So we no longer have to use SSH, which is much weaker than mosh. 
And now we have that. We can clear that up, and we are now in Mosh mode with our Google Cloud Platform project. So the last couple things we want to add are the following. So first we want to actually activate the app engine within our project. We're not going to upload any apps right now, but the idea here is just to have it ready. So for future videos, you guys know that this is already presupposed. So we're going to go back in here to our blink. We're going to paste that in, and we just need to change this here, the project name, to the name of our project itself. So our project name was Blink Test. So put that in there and then click on Enter. It's going to tell me that it's starting this out. Not a problem. We're just going to leave it like that for now. OK, so once that's done, we're going to clear that up. And now we have to make our service accounts. So we're going to go back into our article here. So in this area here, we explain how to set up it by G Cloud the service accounts. So this part here is actually a little bit incomplete, so I'm actually going to grab the example we have down below to make this go faster. So we'll go down here, and we're going to grab uh, the service accounts commands to use them. Okay, so now that we have the text selected, we're just going to click on Command C here, go back in here to Blink, Command V, and the only thing we have to change here are actually the usernames because obviously these don't exist. So we're going to put in the Gmail, which is the admin, and then after that we'll click on enter and we'll have all of our service accounts ready to go. And on top of that, that's going to download the keys.json file that we also need for the service accounts for when we want to apply REST APIs to our domain. So we'll fix that and then come back. Okay, so we actually changed everything that we need to change. So essentially everything is now ready for us to make our service accounts. And now, finally, we're going to click on Enter to continue on with the process here. Okay, that's finished. That only took a few seconds, actually. We can clear that up. And if we do ls here, we're going to see that we have our keys.json file, which is pretty cool. So we can use that for further programming. Now, if we go back to our Google Cloud Platform, and if we go to the three horizontal bars in the upper left, go to IAM and Admin, and go to Service Accounts, that will have created our service accounts here. And we have these two guys here that we are using. Essentially this one, because this is the one we're using right now. And then the only thing we have to do here is go to the three dots, click on Edit, and then go down here and make sure that we have this activated to enable G Suite domain-wide delegation. Now, if you're not working on a domain, not a problem. This is totally optional and will not even come out if you don't have a domain that you're using. If you're just using a regular Gmail, then this won't come out. But for those who do have a domain, it's highly suggested that you put this and activate it so you have control over everything that you're going to be doing within the domain. So after we do that, then we have to do a product name for the consent screen, and we can put anything we want on this because it really doesn't make a difference. And then after that, we'll go down here and click on Save. So once we're done with that, the configuration that we need for the service accounts for the future is now all set up. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And if we go over here to the APIs and services and we go to the dashboard, you will also see that the commands we stuck in with G Cloud have also added uh, all our wonderful APIs that we wanted before. So all these are down here. Those were the commands we put beforehand. So that's all set to go. I will link the video I did previously about how to configure Google Cloud Platform with G Cloud up in the right-hand corner, so you can take a look at that to go more slowly through these processes. But for now, we can see that everything has been set up and ready to go. The last thing we need to do, again, is 100% optional. You cannot do this if you're just using a normal Gmail account, but we want to make sure that we are able to control everything. So what we have to do is we have to go into the admin console of the domain and actually add our client ID from the service account along with the scopes and then we'll have finished off the process. So we're going to open that up now. So once we jump in here, we're going to go into security and then down here we're going to go to advanced settings and then manage API client access. And here's where we're going to add the client ID which is in the keys JSON file. So we're going to go back here we're going to vim inside this, keys.json, go into that, and then we're going to go down, 
where it says client ID and this we are going to select with our mouse. There we go. And then we're going to copy that and we'll go back and paste that in here. And then we're going to add the scopes which is are in the article we mentioned before. They're right here. So we're going to grab this here so we can add it to there. Grab that with here. And again, command C. And then we'll go back to our admin console. And then we'll click command V to add those and authorize. And that will finish off our process. So now that we've done all this, this is actually ready to go. We can get jump out of this right now. Colon X, clear that up. And now we are completely ready to go to start programming in an official manner, being able to configure and manipulate anything within our domain as well if we're using a domain, or at least use the APIs to start programming with Clasp, which would be Google Apps Script, or REST APIs with Python, which we will do in future videos. So if this video has helped, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and if you need anything else, leave it in the comment section below, and I'll be more than happy to take a look at that. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one, and take care.